now. Okay. So here's our big juicy steak, and we eat it all up. It comes into our mouth here, where saliva salivary amylase is released by our salivary glands. This helps it get carried down the throat by the motion of peristalsis, and this gets put into the stomach, which contains gastrin, which then triggers the release of hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen to create pepsin. And what pepsin will do is take your, um, your polypeptide chain here and rip it in half into two smaller polypeptide chains. Now your smaller polypeptide chains go into the duodenum where secretin is released, which releases sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the pH levels and optimize them for optimal digesting situations. Followed by that, we have trypsin, which further digests our smaller polypeptides into di and tripeptides. And then we have CCK, which is released when proteins enter the duodenum, and that releases bile. Now after this, it carries on its way down the small intestine to find itself to the jejunum, which contains intestinal enzymes such as peptidases, peptidase, yeah, that, <laughs> and this digests the polypeptides into single amino acids, or sorry, dying tripeptides, and these are absorbed into your villi, which get carried, <laughs> my god, They get absorbed into the mesenteric capillaries in the villi and get distributed throughout your body for later use. Now all of the proteins that will not be used within the body will carry on through the small intestine to be pooped out as crap. Okay, don't laugh. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh. Okay. That's the worst when you can't can stop. Okay, go. <laughs> Pull it together. Give me 20 seconds. We're on the clock, man. We got this going still. Three, two, one. Okay, so here are my peas that I'm presumably eating for lunch. And I'm going to put them in my mouth where my salivary glands will release salivary amylase. The salivary amylase will lubricate my peas and send them down my throat via peristalsis. When it reaches my stomach, the hormone gastrin will be released, which triggers the release of hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen. These combine to create pepsin. And since pepsin only refers to proteins, it won't do anything to our peas here. When it enters our duodenum, secretin will be released, followed by sodium bicarbonate, which neutralizes and optimizes the pH level, and followed by nucleases, which will start to digest our peas into half of the peas. As our half of the peas carries on its way down the small intestine, it will meet the jejunum, where it will again meet nucleases. Our nucleases will digest our half of our peas into nucleotides, one at a time, all the way down. Now, our nucleotides here will carry on through the small intestine until they are absorbed into the body by our mesenteric capillaries in our villi. And these will carry them to our liver through the... Read it. Read it. It's not labeled. <laughs> Capillary vein. Capillary. The gateway vein thing. Capillary. Well, this no. thing. No. Uh, he, he's looking at it. Now you done good. Hepatic portal vein. Yeah. Through the hepatic portal vein. <laughs> and anything that can't be absorbed will carry on its way through the large intestine to be cropped out. Okay. So here we have our butterball. Our butterball, we stick it in our mouth, 
and our salivary glands release salivary amylase. Our salivary amylase will lubricate the throat and allow peristalsis to carry it down to the stomach. Now when in the stomach, gastrin is released, and this triggers the release of hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen. These combine to create pepsin, but that's kind of pointless because pepsin doesn't do anything to fats. So it carries on its way to the duodenum. In the duodenum, secretin is released, which releases sodium bicarbonate to neutralize and optimize the pH levels and lipase. Now lipase is an enzyme that will break up our triglycerides into our three fatty acids and glycerol. And now after that, we have CCK, which is released when fats enter the duodenum and this triggers the release of bile, which will further digest our fatty acids down to little bits. And now our fats carry on down through the small intestine, which will be absorbed into the lacteal of the villi. And these lacteal will carry our fats up to the shoulder of our body and dump them out. And we haven't been educated on what happens with them after that, so we're going to stop that. And the rest of it, anything that can't be digested, gets carried on throughout the body, through the large intestine, and sent out as crap. Alright, so this is how the carbohydrates are digested. What happens is the carbohydrates are ingested through the mouth and chewed up, where the salivary amylase also comes in. And the salivary amylase digests the uncooked starch, uh, and sorry, the cooked starch, and turns it into maltose. And then these carbs right here, which are now called the bolus, are sent to the back of the throat, where they are then swallowed by the esophagus here. And they are, they come down and they reach the cardiac sphincter, where they are let into the stomach where the hormone gastrin is released, and gastrin contains pepsin, which is a combination of pepsinogen and HCL. Now what the HCL will do is it will turn these carbs here, it will turn their pH uh, to 2.5, so they're very acidic, which will kill any harmful bacteria. Um, and then what the stomach does is it will mix all these carbs around and then they will be they will go down to the pyloric sphincter and be let into the duodenum which is the beginning of the small intestine and what happens in the duodenum is the <clears throat> is the hormone uh, secretin is released which contains sodium bicarbonate. And what that does is it turns that, uh, the pH of all these carbs here to 8.5 so they can be working at their optimum level. So they don't go down through the small intestine and they don't create holes and burn all, all in here. So, after that, the pancreatic amylase is secreted, uh, which digests all the uncooked starch and it turns that into maltose. Now, what happens is the maltose then moves down further into the small intestine. Uh, and the intestinal glands release the enzymes peptidases, nucleases, uh, maltase, and uh, sucrase, and lactase. Now what these do is they turn uh, maltose, sucrose, and lactose into
The maltase digests the maltose into two glucose molecules. The sucrase digests the sucrose into glucose and fructose. The lactase digests the lactose into glucose and galactose. Uh, and the glucose, fructose, and galactose move into the capillaries of the villi where, the, where they are, the capillaries are attached to the hepatic portal vein, which takes the monosaccharides to the liver. And that is this vein right up here, and this is the liver. Now, if the blood sugar uh, is high, the, pan the pancreas will release insulin. The insulin will cause the liver to store the glucose as glycogen. Now, when blood sugar drops again, the pancreas will release that glucagon, and the glucagon will cause the liver to release glucose into the bloodstream. The blood will go to the heart where it is pumped to the, blood, to the body cells. The glucose will enter the cells and go into the mitochondria where, they are, where that glucose is turned into ATB, ATP via cellular respiration. Now, the indigestible waste, the rest is right here. They then move through the rest of the small intestine and go and are excreted out as waste. Yay!